What are you doing? I'm packing. We're going, aren't we? It snowed again last night. From the size of the drifts, we're not going anywhere. Darling, are you awake? Ooh. Honey, don't come down. I'll bring breakfast up to you. No, don't bother. No, don't bother. Well, it's no bother at all. I'd like to do it. No, I'm not hungry. I just don't have some coffee. Well, it's all laid out in here. There you go. This will make you feel a lot better. Oh, really? I doubt it. Eliza? Good morning, sweetheart. Oh, well, good morning to you, too. <laughs> How long have you been awake? I don't know. I didn't look at the clock. Did, did the baby wake you? Mm-mm. Well, yes. You go back to sleep? Oh, Turner didn't make a sound. I was thinking about Elan. Rusty. I want to make a home for her. Lovely, isn't she? Yes, yeah, she is. You're Lloyd Kendall, aren't you? Ah, uh, yes. Oh, I'm happy to meet you, Mr. Kendall. I subscribe to your paper. While I always don't agree with your editorial policy, I always find it a good read. Yeah, I enjoy your columnists, especially. Oh, well, thank you, Mrs. Uh... Wolf. It's Mrs. Mrs. Wolf. Yes. I'm the social work on the case. The baby? Case. It sounds so impersonal, I know. But every profession has its language, you understand? Yeah. It's good to see that you've taken a special interest in Elan. It's an unusual name, don't you think? Mm, it is. Speaks well for the mother. In what way? She bothered to name her. We'll still have difficulty with the records, provided, of course, she was born in a hospital. Mother hasn't identified herself yet. Unfortunately, no. But the baby's in very good health, I'm pleased to report. I was just speaking with her doctor. Oh, that's terrific. Yes, indeed. You know, there's always a chance of an abandoned baby suffering from exposure. It's a good thing the Centels found her when they did. She's going to be released soon. And so now I have to find her a... A, a, uh, a foster home. Oh, no. oh, you're familiar with the process? Somewhat. Of course, you're a newspaper man. <laughs> I, uh, I want you to know that the paper is ready to assist you in any way possible. I mean, don't hesitate to call me or my editor, Laura McCarthy. We'd like to help find the real mother, if well, possible. Oh, thank you. But you've done enough already, Mr. Kendall. I mean, some members of the press would have sensationalized a story like this. You didn't. You stated the facts, which makes our job much easier. Well, if you excuse me, let me go and find our baby a home. It was nice chatting with you, Mr. Okay, Ford. thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. You want something? Some toast? No, I'm fine, really. Oh, honey, I wish there was something I could do or something I could say. Oh, Mom, there's nothing to say. I just don't like seeing you like this. Well, it's my own fault. You've been terribly hurt, dear. I've done my share of hurting other people, haven't I? Well, you never intended to. 
Look at what I did to Susie. Honey, you just wanted her to see the truth. What about Warren, huh? I hurt him, too. Now, honey, I cannot let you do this to yourself. In the long run, Susie's going to be better off. And the only mistake you've ever made is getting involved with Warren Carter in the first place. I've made mistakes all the way down the line. Darling, you're being too hard on yourself. I'm not. I'm facing facts. I woke up this morning, I looked in the mirror, and I didn't like what I saw. Darling, that's exhaustion. You've been on a treadmill, an emotional treadmill for months. I saw a selfish, ugly little girl. Oh, Wendy. All the terrible things I've done were written all over my face. I just want to grow up. Oh, honey, you have grown up, and much too fast. No. No, I want to make up for what I did to Susie. And I want to... I want to finally give to somebody all I've ever done is take. From you, from Keith, even Warren. Honey, ever, the only thing Warren ever gave you was a heartache. But I was with him for what I thought he could give. Now, Kristen is right. I've been, I've been flitting through life expecting everything to come to me. No purpose, no direction. That's probably why I got involved with Warren in the first place. But when I was pregnant, I finally cared about someone other than myself. Oh, honey, I'm so sorry you had to go through that. Brian helped me. He told me he loved me. Well, of course he loves you. He's your brother. Oh, honey. And I love you. I love you more than anything else in the world. Now, we've all made mistakes. Your brother's made them, and your mother's made them. Of course, I would only admit that to you. Hey, I'm sorry for dumping on you. What are mothers for? Now, listen, I have made the biggest breakfast I think I've made ever, and it's out in the kitchen right now. I'm going to make it up to you. Someday I'm going to make it up to everyone. Honey, what you can do for me right now is eat my pancakes. Now, I've struggled with the batter, and all I need to do is plop it in the can and pray. There's more coffee there. Paper's there. Have you been? Thought it was coming. She needs a foster home. Why not us? Liza, you already have your hands full with, with Turner, with the television station, with the runaway shelter. Darling, I'm very serious about this. I can see that. I keep thinking about her mother. I want to help her as much as I do the baby. You already have. Oh, but not enough. She asked for our help. She chose us. Darling, you don't know that for sure. Well, you heard what Mrs. Wolf said. This was not a random thing. Oh, Rusty, she's probably no more than a child herself. Babies having babies, isn't that what she said? You care as much as I do. I want things to work out for her. I, I, I'm just certain that Mrs. Wolf and the authorities are going to find the right foster home for her. Then why not us? Darling, I'm not sure that we should take on that responsibility. I'm not as certain as you that it's ours to take. Do you disapprove? I'm just trying to keep a clear head about it. Look, I've given it a lot of thought. I even talked to our attorneys. Well, then, if you want it as much as I Sweetheart, do, but... Mr. Conklin called because he had seen the article in the Herald. He advised against it. I mean, since when does a lawyer do that? That's not what you pay him for. He called as a friend. You remember the pain we went through with Sissy's baby when we had to give him up? I don't want you to have to go through that again. Look, all I can think about right now is that little baby over in the hospital. 
She needs a home. I don't want to see her place with strangers. I think we can make a home for her until we can find her natural mother. Darling, I'm not talking about a lifetime commitment. I just don't think we should race into a decision that we'll regret later. We need to make sure we know what we're doing. And we need time for that. Oh, there is no time. They're going to place her as soon as they can. Brian, I don't know what to make of it. Well, I came back from the kitchen and she was gone. I am trying not to panic. Look, maybe she just needs some more time to herself. Uh, hold on. That may be her. Hold on. Oh. No, it wasn't. All right. Okay, I'll call you just as soon as she gets here. It Bye. was... Uh... A case of either letting the heat out or letting me in. I do not like unexpected visitors. Are you ill? No, I'm just not dressed. Well, your secretary told me that you were going to be home for the day when I called from the hospital. From the hospital? Are you ill? No, no, no. I was just there to see the baby. I had some letters Look, I have had a very hectic morning around here. Why are you here talking to me about some baby? Don't you read the newspapers? I've had one or two other things on my mind this morning. Oh, well, obviously you don't know that the Santels found a baby, young how very nice for them. Now, if you will excuse me, they what? Abandoned child, little girl on the doorstep. Oh, no. Oh, what a way to start out life. Oh, it's just awful. But then when little girls grow up, it doesn't get any easier. Are you all right, Stephanie? Will you just go away? Can I get you anything? I'm fine. You don't look fine. Is there anybody home with you today? Wendy, Rose? No. Well, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm not going to leave here with you like this. This hasn't got anything to do with you. Well, there may be something that I could do for you. I would like to help. Well, I wouldn't ask. This is not business. Besides, you don't have any idea what it's like to raise a daughter. No, well, maybe not. I just wanted you to know that I'm here for you, then. Who's this? I don't hold you responsible for any of this, and I appreciate everything you've done. I know you'll get us out of here, even if you have to weave a magic carpet with all those dead trees. You don't sound so sure of yourself. If you don't, I will. I don't call my Aunt Jo on my birthday or let her know where I am. She will be frantic. Is today your birthday? It's day after tomorrow. And by then I'll be in Santa Domingo and get my divorce, and I couldn't ask for a better birthday present. A birthday, huh? Yeah. It's a big one. It's my 21st birthday. Now I'm all grown up and on my own. And I'm free to go out in the world and seek my fortune. You know, there really is a bright side to everything. Yeah. Well, we can't have you stuck in the snow on your 21st birthday. I'm going to go have another talk with Cleo. Maybe this is going to get her going, huh? Now, oh, you should see her, Joe. She is the prettiest little baby. Uh, except for Turner, of course. Oh, of course. Yeah. Only I guess you don't call little boys pretty, do you? Oh, sure you do. Just don't let them hear you. <laughs> Speaking of little girls, uh, no word? about Susie, huh? Well, I, I didn't really expect to hear yet. And she's not a little girl, Stu. The after tomorrow, 21 years old. Hey, wow. <laughs> Gosh, I can remember Susie when she was knee high. You know, it's funny when they're that small, Joe, you never expect them to grow up. And then all of a sudden, they're walking, talking, going to school, college, marriage. Divorce? Yeah. That isn't easy for anyone, honey. Well, she had the courage to do it, and for that, I am very proud of her. Well, listen, young lady, you are the one who taught her to believe in herself. No, I really had nothing to do with this. She did it all by herself. I'm still surprised you haven't heard from her. Oh, I will. And she wants to talk to me. Van Joe. 
I was wondering if you'd heard anything from Susie. No, she hasn't. Anything else? <laughs> well, yeah, as long as I'm here, I would like to set the record straight about something. Brian accused me of making her miss her flight. Oh, I'm sure she caught another one. Well, I want you to know that I did try to stop her. I did go to the airport. Now, after. Warren, uh, Joe isn't interested in whether you went Still, to... that's that's okay. Matter of fact, since Warren's here, there are a few things I'd like to say to him. I'll be in the kitchen if you need me, honey. I haven't forgotten about her birthday. Oh, I'll bet you haven't. It was, she's probably celebrating it by herself somewhere off in the middle of nowhere. She'll be all right. My only regret is she didn't do this a long time ago. You really blame me for this, don't you? Yes. I do hold you solely responsible for the whole mess. Okay, fine. <laughs> Go ahead. Blame me for the ills of the world. Why not? Everybody has been lately. Poor Warren. You know something? It is possible to do more than just bodily harm. It is possible to kill a spirit, trust, love. And you almost did that to Susie, but not quite. And when she comes back, she's going to be free of you once and for all. I can't tell you how glad I am about that. And you who pretended to be my friend. Your friend? No, Warren. I was never your friend. Not for a minute. Oh, I'll admit, I may have put my own feelings aside for Susie's sake. She did love you. I wanted her to be happy. I even hoped you'd make her happy. But you couldn't. Or you wouldn't. And now I don't want you to ever see her again. If you're on the boat, stay downstairs in your own club. I don't want to see you either. You know, I never really had anybody who loved me as much as you love Susie. Obviously, you've hated me right from the very beginning. No. No, that isn't true. I, I didn't hate you. I wanted to like you. I really tried. I tried to give you the benefit of a doubt. And I'm sorry, because there is no longer any doubt. Why did you come here? You assume, of course, some underhanded motive. This solicitation I find a little out of character. Stephanie, I, I have no desire to add to your problems. I just don't think you should be alone right now. I've been alone most of my life. I am not going to change now for you. I am not asking you to. I just wanted to see you today to... Bring me some papers to sign. Now I remember. Where are they? Well, I do have some experience as a parent, remember? Not much. May I borrow your pen? I can't find mine. Well, it's, it's nice to know that I'm useful for something. Thank you. You're a very strong woman. Even the strongest of us need to lean on somebody else every once in a while. I will ask your opinion in matters of business. This is personal. We have an agreement, remember? Our relationship is strictly professional. Nothing in this life is strictly anything. I things go on, things happen to us. Well, what goes on in my life is none of your business. I think that concludes our business. You uh, said something about little girls a few minutes ago. Life can get more difficult as they get older. Well, it's not any easier for little boys. Thank you, Stephanie. I'll see myself out. Do you think they'll let me hold her? Well, insist. Hello. I hope I haven't kept you waiting too long. Oh, no, no, that's all right. Yeah, my office said you were eager to see me. I'm glad you could meet me here. Uh, we've been thinking about it a lot. 
Yes, we, uh, we have some questions. We're considering being foster parents. I've gotten so many requests for Elan. Well, certainly, since we're... Miss Sintel, I know exactly what you're going to say. You'd be very likely candidates, I assure you, but the decision is not up to me. You see, the commissioner has Mrs. to Wolf? approve... There's yes. a young lady outside inquiring about the baby. Uh -oh. Hey, mister, come here. Come here. I'm a police officer. Come here. He's crazy. Who? He's got Who's, a gun. Who's crazy? Who knows names? A man in room 34. I'll get behind the car. I'll take care of it.